Hello, it's Dr. Macho for Heart and Lungs Focused Ultrasound. We started with a summary of diastolic dysfunction and we discussed the parameters you need to assess diastolic dysfunction. And all those parameters do have limitations. But there are also some situations where the measurements cannot be applied. And one of these specific situations is relevant mitral regurgitation. Here I provided you with a loop with relevant MR and in this case you simply cannot assess left ventricular filling pressures properly. So if you see relevant MR, so it's not talking about mild or mild to moderate mitral regurgitation, but moderate to severe or severe mitral regurgitation, you shouldn't apply measurements for diastolic dysfunction. The next situation you have to be aware of is heart transplant. In heart transplant patients, you also shouldn't measure diastolic dysfunction, especially at the early stages when heart transplant is not too long ago, the measurements will be entirely off. But there's one measurement you can actually do and that's the tricuspid regurgitation and the systolic pulmonary arterial pressure. If you have a proper TR signal as seen in the right side, so the image is a bit turned around, it's an atypical, apical view of the right ventricle and you see TR. When you have that, you can measure TR and the peak velocity and therefore calculate systolic pulmonary arterial pressures. The next situation you cannot apply the measurements is in patients with a left ventricular assist device. How do you know that there is a left ventricular assist device present? Well, left ventricular assist devices are used in heart failure patients. In this case, you see a short axis view of the subcoastal approach of the heart. If you want to know how to perform subcoastal views, not only the four chamber view, in the compact echo course, you will find videos about the subcoastal approach and all other views of the heart as well. Well, in this specific view, you see that there is in the center of the heart a structure which doesn't belong there. On the right hand side, you have the same patient in a peristernal long axis view. You can see the left ventricle, the mitral valve, the right ventricle, and in the center of the left ventricle, there is this assist device. So be aware that in this case, with a left ventricular assist device, you cannot measure diastolic dysfunction. And of course, we mentioned it already in atrial fibrillation, you have several limitations. For example, that you do not have an E to A ratio, but you can rely on E to E prime. And E to E prime in atrial fibrillation actually provides a lot of information because E to E prime increases with severity of heart failure in those patients. So an actual E to E prime which is lower is better. And an E to E prime ratio is overall better than BNP and left atrial area. And if an improvement of heart failure with, for example, heart failure treatment is possible in a patient, E to E prime is declining. Continuing, we do have several formulas to provide us with calculations of left ventricular filling pressures or the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. But be aware, those formulas are far away from being exact. Sometimes they could be helpful, so I want to list some formulas you can use. The first one is the calculation of the PCWP, the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. It's simply E to E prime plus four. That is very often used, for example, in emergency departments to get an overview if an increase in pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is present. Another formula is the so-called Naguet formula, which is 1.24 times E to E prime plus 1.9 equals the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. You see that this formula is already rather complicated, so you have to be aware that you really have to measure exact and that there are also limitations in the actual measurements you can acquire. Another possible formula is the E divided by the velocity propagation. Then you can calculate the left ventricular and diastolic pressure. And if this E to velocity propagation ratio is above 2.5, the left ventricular and diastolic pressures are above 15 millimeters of mercury in patients with reduced ejection fraction. So also a measurement with several limitations and you will see an example of this velocity propagation. It's per se a very complicated measurement to perform. There's another measurement where you can include the velocity propagation and the IVRT. It's 4.5 times 10 divided by 2 times the 
IVRT plus the velocity propagation minus nine, and then you get the left ventricular and diastolic pressure. Please see all the brackets as they are written in the formula, but also in this formula you see there are many variables and especially the IVRT and the velocity propagation I consider very hard measurements. So simply be aware that all these formulas have several limitations and pitfalls. But if you're curious and you want to try those formulas, I encourage you to try it. It is, if you have the time to do it, actually a lot of fun and combine it or compare it with the invasive measurements if you have a possibility to measure it invasively.